Good evening and welcome to Spooky Stitches. My name is Sheena Peril and I'm your host for the podcast that is 50% wool and 50% ectoplasm. It's been a little while since we have had a knitting podcast and if you can't tell, yes I know it is still 90 degrees outside but I am in full spooky mode and I cannot wait for Halloween. Um, I'm hoping that we can get out to Spirit sometime tonight. We only have one near us that's open. There's supposed to be three, and I am salty about that. I also just had a coffee, so if I'm talking a little bit faster than usual, that would be why. I normally have chai, but I'm out of chai, so I'm substituting with coffee. Um, just a little bit of an update. Uh, these filming podcasts are still going to be a little bit sporadic. I do have some other content planned. Um, if you want to hear more of my luscious voice, you can try subscribing to my True Crime podcast, which is available on Spotify, and it is all about the Highway of Tears, aka the missing and murdered Indigenous women found along Highway 16 in British Columbia, Canada, and I will link to that down below. A little bit of a health update. I have oh, I have so many doctor's appointments in the last like month and upcoming month. Um, so far, I'm seeing a neuropsychologist, which I've been seeing since January, my regular therapist, my GP, an endocrinologist, and a rheumatologist, and oh, and I also saw an allergist earlier in the year. So I'm seeing all of the ists. Um, so far, nobody has answers for me other than, oh, I know you're tired all the time. Did you know you have a autoimmune disorder? And a lot of inflammation. Yes, yes, thank you. I'm aware of that. That is what I've been trying to get a diagnosis on for seven years. So that's still where I am on my health. I know that I keep saying I'm going to do a video on a health update, but I don't want to release that until I have some kind of a diagnosis. But so far, all I have is a whole bunch of either negative tests or indeterminate tests that don't really tell us anything. So that's where that is. Um, in the past month, it has been too hot to exist, but I've been doing a lot of crafting. So let's go on and move into the finished objects. So let's start with the non-yarn stuff, and then we can get into the knitting and crochet. So um, not last year, but the year before for Christmas, Ash gave me two basket kits. I used to do a lot of back basketry in high school. And I've really wanted to get back into it, but living in an apartment, there's just not a lot of space for multiple hobbies. <laughs> so she gave me two basket kits. And to preface this, neither of these are styles of baskets I had made before. So even though I have some very, very old experience making baskets, I've never made this style before. This is the first one. This is a Quaker cheese basket. It is very lopsided. It actually looks better from this angle than it does from this one. It's really bad from the side and I kind of want to burn it. But um, I, she got both of them because they had star shapes in the bottom. So I was joking. This basket is apparently Jewish. It says it's Quaker, but it's Jewish. <laughs> and then this basket is apparently pagan because it has the five pointed star. This one came out a lot better. I'd never done twined baskets before. Again, it's a bit lopsided. The shape isn't quite right, but I don't think I've even made a round basket before. The ones I was making before were all square or rectangle. So this was just a really interesting experiment for me. But I like this, the way this one came out. I haven't figured out what to do with either of them yet. So they're just kind of sitting around and I use the little one um, anytime I find something in my room that needs to go into another room to be put away. I put it in there that way I can keep it all in one place and get it out. And then this one's just been sitting around looking for something to use it for. The problem with both of them is because of the open bottom, I can't really put like yarn in here to work with because eventually it's going to fall out the bottom. So don't know what I'm going to use them for. 
they already have cat hair stuck to them because it's my house and there's going to be cat hair. That's just the way it is. So, so that's the two baskets. And then I recently joined the SCA. I think I talked about that in the last episode, maybe. And I had an event that I was going to go to. My very first event wasn't even a member yet. And the friend who was taking me was like, you know, we have garb that you can borrow. No big deal. And I'm just like, I am autistic, a textile historian, and I have no life other than, hey, come to this costume party with me. So what do you think I did? Yes, I made a dress in uh, 13 hours the day before the event. So I don't have any photos of me wearing it yet. Um, I have the ones that I took, and I think I showed you last time, of me wearing it when it was done enough but since then I have made some changes so the main thing I had to do was I needed to make the straps longer because the original straps were too small and I keep forgetting that I need to add the little uh lacing hole here the buttonhole whatever eyelet that's the word uh so that I can attach it to the ribbon but uh, I keep forgetting to do that. I also went through and I used my sewing machine buttonholer to make the eyelets down the side for the lacing. So they were already very secure. I just went through and embroidered over them so that they would look more period. And then I changed the cord I was using. I was using some grow grain ribbon because it's what I had on hand. And I changed it out for some leather lacing. The other thing that I did is... I hemmed it. I cut off about eight inches of hem because I had way too much fabric at the bottom. And then instead of hemming it in like a rolled hem or an invisible hem or something like that, I just took some bias binding and bound the edge, which this is a historical finish. So when it drags on the ground, this black is going to wear out and that way it's not damaging the body of the dress. And so the binding can just be changed out as it gets damaged. So that is the dress and I'm going to use this pattern to make a modern dress for myself, but I haven't gotten there yet. So in addition to the dress, I needed some accessories to go with it. I didn't have these done for the event, but they were things where like, as I was there and experiencing the SCA event, like these are things that I realized that I wished I had. So the first thing that I made was a set of pockets. So I think these might technically be too late for that specific outfit. Um, I was going for like a general early 14th century generic historical. I know that I'm going to be role playing mid 1500s, but I didn't have time to make a mid 1500s gown that was going to take way too long. And it was also a peasants event. So I needed something that was going to be a little bit more casual, a um, little bit more laid back. So that's why I chose that style of kirtle. And I definitely didn't have time to make sleeves, which is why they tie at the shoulder and have the straps rather than having a full length sleeve. So I have these pockets and these were just made with the scraps from my hem and then um, just some old muslin that I had laying around. And there are slits in the side seams of the dress so that way I can access these when I'm wearing the dress. And then the next thing I made, oh, I didn't grab it. I also have a pair of drawers that I made, which are still in the box where I store this stuff. I'm not gonna pull them out now. I thought I already had them when I grabbed the apron. But yes, I did make an apron. And this is just some leftover muslin for the waistband and then just some plain white cotton for the skirt of the apron with a rolled hem. It's nothing fancy. It's just a very, very basic apron to protect that dress when I'm wearing it. 
And then I also made this pouch with my leftovers. So this is the same bias binding that I used on my hem. I had just enough to bind the edges of the bag. And then um, I, when I took off the original straps, I saved them. So that's what these are. You can see <laughs> what the difference in length was. And then uh, this ribbon was left over from the trim. It's what goes across the top of the bodice on the dress. So this just slides onto the apron strings and it's deep enough that I've already got my fan in here. And then I've also got a handkerchief. So those are easy access. And then I can put things like my wallet and my phone that needs to be more hidden into the interior pockets and just have this for the stuff that I need more access to. I haven't figured out what kind of closure I'm going to do yet. If I want to do like a button or a tie or something, obviously I already have eyelets on here, so I could go either way. But if I do a button, I am going to have to make these bigger because these eyelets are really small because they weren't really meant to be separated from whatever the drawstring was. Um, so yeah, this, it needs a little bit of adjustment, but it's basically done. So that is my kit for the SCA. I have a couple more pieces that I want to make. Like I want to make myself some stockings and I need to make a chemise, but I haven't gotten around to those yet. I did buy fabric to make the chemise which is a white cotton linen blend, but I'm not gonna show it to you because it's just, it's white fabric. It's nothing exceptional. Okay, my camera decided that it was no longer gonna stay upright and I had to turn on the fan because it's very warm in here and I had to close the window to film, but. Okay, um, my next finished object, I shouldn't have been working on, like I had no reason to even start this but I saw the yarns together and I really wanted to make something with them. So I made a sort of 1940s style vest and I will insert some pictures here of it being worn. I'm not totally happy with the fit on it. For some reason, I just could not wrap my head around increasing for the bust at the same time as decreasing for the armholes. <laughs> um, I just, I couldn't get my brain around it at the time, so it is a little bit smaller than I wanted it to be, but I'm still happy with the way that it came out. Um, my next finished object, I've got a lot of them this time around. I've been working really hard at crossing things off my list, but my second object is a sock that I made for Ash. Um, for my birthday, I went out and I went to a piercer to get one of my, uh, ears re pierced my second hole had closed up so I had it redone and there was a yarn shop right down the road from the piercer there's also an Asian grocery store so we will definitely be there frequently but um I went to the yarn shop on the way home and it's called the new knittery it's in Renton Washington and they had a really great selection of non-wool yarns. And if you remember, Ash cannot wear or even be around wool. So I found a sock yarn that was in her colors. So I'm calling these the Hobbit socks. This is unique yarns and the colorway is just 1080. It doesn't have a name, it's just a number. Um, and this is my basic sock recipe with a short row heel. And then I did a ribbed leg and a stretchy bind off for her. I haven't woven in the ends yet. It's fine. I still have to make the second sock. Um, and it's kind of funny because I've been there twice so far and both times I have only bought yarn for her. I haven't bought anything for myself yet from this shop. <laughs> My penultimate finished object and my camera is sliding again. Let me go get a tripod. Okay, are we stable? 
and where we need to be. I mean, we're never truly stable around here. I mean, just ask my therapist. But um, this doesn't mean that I can't see my notes. So bear with me here. Um, all right, second to last finished object, as I was saying, is the Buy Pride hoodie. That has already gone off to the recipient. I don't have photos of it being worn, but I will put in some of my finished object photos right here. She is very happy with it. Um, from what I understand, it's getting a lot of use in her air conditioned office. Meanwhile, I am baking and I just had to turn on the fan. So, <laughs> you know, Washington. And then the last thing that I finished up is some spinning fiber that I have had on the wheel for two years, according to Ravelry. Um, that was not intentional. Like I said, um, Ash is allergic to wool, so I can't spin if she's in the room because there's too many fibers floating around. Um, but this is Nitpick Stroll Bear. It's a two-ply that's not going to focus. And I think that it's... That might actually be a lace weight. Um, it's somewhere between a lace weight and a light fingering. And no, it is not in a hank because putting it in a hank would require getting out my ball winder and that requires cleaning off a table space for it. And it just, it's an Amish style Swift. So I need a space about three feet in diameter to work with. And I don't have that right now. So it's in a ball waiting to be used. Eventually I'm going to dye it, but I don't know what color yet or how I want to dye it. So it is going to marinate in the stash once I finish filming this. Now, shall we move on to the whips? Because that was a lot. That was a lot, a lot. <laughs> but I do still have stuff on the needles and most of it's going to be familiar. So since I finished up the hoodie and the sock and the vest, I went and picked up the flamingo sweater again. Okay, so the last time you saw this, it had three quarters of a sleeve and a partial body, and that's where I left off. Well, since then, I have finished the first sleeve, and this is from Indie Untangled. It is Trey Liz, is the name of the yarn, and the colorway is when you play the game of Indie. It's showing up more orange on camera. It's really like a hot coral pink. And then this black yarn is Nitpick Stroll in the colorway Red Wing Blackbird. I'm still missing the second arm. It'll happen eventually. That's where we are on the body. So this is where we left off last time. And this is where we are now. So I've made quite a bit of progress. I'm on the second ball of this color and I've used about half a ball of this color. So I still have a whole second skein of the Trey Liz and obviously I'm going to use it to make the other sleeve and then I'm probably going to use it for the ribbing at the hem of the sweater. But I'm still going to have like a full skein left over and I don't know what to do with it. It's a singles yarn, which is why I didn't want to use it to make socks. Originally, I was going to make socks with it. And then it came and I'm like, oh, this is a singles. So that's not going to hold up. So yeah, um, I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with the leftovers. I'm sure something will come to me. But this is no pattern. It's just a raglan um, with contrast collar and sleeves. And then the hem is going to be contrasting as well. And then I think I think this is the last whip I have to show you, and it is the Eleonora stocking. So I have finished the leg. I think there might be a couple of repeats of the ankle before we start on the heel, but I need to double check my notes. I haven't done that yet. And this is where we were last time. So quite a bit of progress has been made. Um, but what I've been doing is examining it section by section and writing down what the pattern is going to be and then checking off those repeats as I go. So I need to write down what the next section of the pattern is going to be because these are being reverse engineered. 
they're based on the burial stockings of Eleonora de Toledo and this particular stocking I'm trying to get a stitch by stitch gauge for gauge accurate recreation to see how they were made and then eventually I'm going to cast on a pair using like modern techniques modern materials and those are going to be my SCA stockings because I've been working on these for way too long and they're expensive and I can't get more yarn so I only have enough for one stocking and I don't think that I would have the heart to make these again on size triple zero needles and then actually wear them. I just don't think I could do it. <laughs> so I'm going to use less expensive and easier to use materials for the ones that I'm actually going to wear so that way it doesn't break my heart if I get a hole in them or something. So that was a lot. Um, I have a little bit of acquisitions to show you. I did do some fabric shopping, but I didn't bring out the fabric for filming because I totally forgot about it. Um, but you'll see that at least partially next time because I am going to start sewing with some of it. Um, and like I said, I am in full spooky mode already, as you can tell. So I went to Target and they had these in the dollar spot. I love crystal balls. Got another one right over here and you know, my tarot collection. So I got this and I'd been storing all of my scraps and offcuts of yarn and just a bag to use for stuffing. I don't know why I'm keeping them. I just am. And I'm like, you know, it would be really great would be to put it in the crystal ball. So here's my offcuts. I also have I think this is supposed to be a candy dish, but that just feels messy to me. <laughs> so this is the leftover from the spinning that I showed you. And so th this is what was left on the bobbin when I was done plying. So I just took what was left and chain plied it. So I just have this little bit of three ply yarn that doesn't quite match with the rest. So that's in here too, and I can use that for things like tying up the original skein when I go to dye it. And, you know, now I have, if I need to tie something down, or if I want to try finger loop braiding, or, um, like I said, anything, I need a little bit of something to tie something up with, I've got it right here. And for now, this is living on my desk because I don't know where else to put it. As you can tell, I'm a little bit cramped in this room, so I have run out of flat surfaces to store things on. And if I put it over here, the one spot that I have a little bit of room left, that's a recipe for having my cats knock it over. I'm really surprised that this one is still in one piece, and the number of times I have fixed this candle holder is disgusting, but it doesn't stay upright, because <laughs> cats. And then the only other acquisition I have, um, like I said, when I go to the new knittery, so far I have only bought things for Ash. And last time, the second time I went there, I got three skeins. This is Barocco Remix Light. It is 100% recycled fibers, nylon, cotton, acrylic, silk, and linen. It was $16 a ball. And I got three of them because I'm going to hold it triple. And looks like this is a fingering weight, or it's a three on here, it's light. And it's machine washable, but I'm going to hold it triple because she has requested um, like that collar shawl thing that Claire wears in the first season of Outlander. She's requested something like that to go with her SCA kit. So I'm going to make that for her with this, and because it's teal, I can steal it from her. But she really loves tweed, and it's very hard to find tweeds that aren't made of wool. I have already rambled on for about 30 minutes here, which is about the limit of what my computer can handle uploading in one go in terms of video. Um, I've been looking for a spooky story for you. And I'm not having a whole lot of luck, so if there's one that you would like me to read, please do send it to me. I have my contact details in the description down below, as well as links to everything that I have talked to, all of the yarns used, all of that good stuff. And I think 
I'm going to go ahead and sign off for the day, for the night, whatever. And hopefully the next time I see you, it will be significantly cooler and a whole lot spookier. Um, I do want to put out a reminder though. Um, and also thank you for all of my current and past patrons. If you would like to join the Patreon, you can do so at the link down below. If you join at the $10 tier or above by September 5th, then you'll be on the list to get one of my annual swag boxes. So these are something that I send out to $10 and above patrons. You don't have to stay at the $10 level as long as you are signed up for September and October. It just gives me a chance to make sure that I have enough supplies to send those out. And you get things like stationery, there's usually something handmade knitter crocheted, stitch markers, jewelry, washi tape. Um, I'm trying to come up with a theme this year that I can put around it. I already know at least two of the things that are going to go in those boxes. Um, but you do have to sign up by September 5th, so that way I can get an accurate count of all the supplies that I need. Um, so check that out down below, and don't forget to look into the Ghosts of Highway 16, my new true crime podcast. And I will see you in a couple of weeks, if not before. Ciao!